People have different lifestyles in the current life we live. They have specific values that they consider sacred in life. They integrate these values they are inspired by into their lives and create a unique subjective culture for themselves. Some base their perspectives on life entirely on innovative, idealistic ideas suitable for the present era. Some benefit from the past while remaining open-minded about the future. Others, however, are not only resistant to the innovations of their time but also permanently closed to future changes. They organize their lifestyles entirely according to the past and are traditionalists. However, when this conservative structure towards the past becomes extreme, these societies are often labeled as narrow-minded or fanatic. These individuals are against schools, see technology as the work of the devil, and deny scientific truths they consider real. Therefore, the term reactionary is used for such attitudes. One of these conservative societies is the Mennonites, who live in countries like Belize in Central America. The Mennonites are a community with a life perspective entirely shaped by the Protestant denomination of Christianity, with a population exceeding two million worldwide. They are originally of European descent. They permanently settled in the Americas due to Europeans establishing colonies in the American regions in the past. They conduct all their daily activities according to the Bible and live a life disconnected from modern life. So, let's take a closer look at this special community in America. The Mennonites are extremely conservative Protestants who avoid the developed world. They adapt the regions they live in to be suitable for themselves, regardless of where that region is. For example, they are divided into various professions within their community. Some engage in agriculture and grow vegetables, some are tailors and some are blacksmiths. In this way, they maintain their community without the need for the innovations of the outside modern world. For instance, they build their own schools and educate children with someone from within their community. This education consists of religious teachings that are as far away from scientific words and concepts as possible. For example, classes teaching philosophy or encouraging critical thinking are prohibited. Subjects like history, geography and foreign languages are not trained. They only teach mathematics enough for basic calculations, mainly for everyday business purposes. In their schools, girls and boys can be in the same class. However, any boy and girl child cannot sit side by side. The general focus of education is to read verses from the Bible and inform children in the light of these verses. Of course, they must learn the Latin alphabet to be able to read the Bible. Therefore, children starting school are first taught the Latin alphabet. Education for Mennonites starts at the age of six and finishes at the age of 13. By the time they reach 13, they have completely learned the Bible. And from that moment on, they start living their lives according to the Bible. In other words, for Mennonites, high school and university life are absolutely unacceptable. Schools in cities alienate people from religion and equip them with information that is considered less important than religion. For this reason, they see schools where their rules dominate and the Bible is the basis as the best option for themselves. Of course, these schools do not receive any state support. Mennonites organize this entire particular way of life within their communities. In Mennonite communities, a child who graduates from their school can work as a blacksmith in the region, engage in agriculture, or work with livestock. A girl child can milk animals, take care of and clean horses, or feed them. I say girls because there is not much gender-based job segregation in Mennonite professions. For example, a 15-year-old girl can forge iron in her father's workshop. If the family does not have a male child, iron and tool works are inevitably left to the girls. Mothers, on the other hand, bake bread in a manner specific to the medieval culture. They are also responsible for the cleanliness and order of the house. Mothers also sew clothes for everyone in the family. As you might guess, Mennonites do not wear ready-made factory products and produce their own unique standardized clothing. For instance, they go to local stores in the area to buy fabric. They sew bright colors for their children because bright colors represent attractiveness. Darker, muted colors are sewn for middle-aged women. Men wear straw hats and complete their outfits with checkered shirts. This is the extent of clothing options for women and men, and deviating from this main concept is prohibited. Otherwise, they would be considered deviating from their faith. 
As you know, in today's world, women combine their stylish clothes with various cosmetics applied to their faces. Similarly, Mennonites are forbidden to use any makeup products, even if they have healing properties. Just like they cannot wear earrings, they cannot wear bracelets or watches. Each family has 7 to 12 children and they see having children as a blessing because they believe that children will continue this culture they inherit from their ancestors and preserve their lineage. Therefore, children are considered a grace from God for Mennonites. You might wonder how they take care of 10 children, but these children have no school expenses. They do not dress in various clothes. Also, they have no activities such as phones, the internet, private schools, or a culture of traveling. Even listening to music is forbidden. Children and people can only socialize in one way by going to church on Sundays and praying. Therefore, taking care of children for Mennonite families is as easy as slaughtering a few chickens, obtaining crops from the field to feed them, and they have no expenses for their families. Children are generally blonde with colored eyes. Since they are exposed to many traditions before grasping their own consciousness, they happily accept everything they see from their families. For example, none of them know about television or computers or they cannot see a child who is different from them. Therefore, you cannot see any desires or requests that go against the hierarchy among Mennonite children. So, they live entirely directed by their families. Also, getting sick in Mennonite communities is one of the worst things that can happen to a person there. Because when someone in the Mennonite family gets sick, they do not take them to hospitals in the cities. They choose a person in their town who is most interested in the healing art, and this person starts providing services specifically to the Mennonite community. Of course, this person has no medical education. In other words, they try to find solutions to people's illnesses based on what they read and learn from healing books. Due to their opposition to both science and almost everything human-made, Mennonites do not compromise on their traditions and accept living with illnesses. In addition to these aspects, Everything about Mennonite clothing, from its shape to color, is predetermined, and they cannot deviate from the relevant criteria. Otherwise, they are not only expelled from the community, but also permanently excluded as individuals who act against their faith. In such cases, it is possible to say that the rules are very strict and breaking them makes life there impossible. Despite this, some of them can take risks. Even though they love the region they live in, they think that some rules are extreme. For example, this man has been excluded by Mennonites due to his ideas, and no Mennonite in the region does business with him anymore, and they do not even sell food products to him. Or this person secretly obtained a phone without the knowledge of other Mennonites, and thus engaged in a deviant action. If this family is caught with a phone, they will face significant penalties and may even be expelled. Still, having a phone is fascinating for them. It's like they have come from 200 years ago and met a smartphone. If someone approaches, they suddenly gather and hide the item. On the other hand, in the regions where Mennonites live, motorized vehicles are not allowed in any way. When people go from one place to another, they use horse-drawn carts. When you go there, you can see that time has stopped in these lands. There is no trace of cars and their use is prohibited. Therefore, horse breeding is indispensable for Mennonites. Horses are a tremendous means of transportation for them. Although it is possible to observe their lives by watching them, it cannot be said that they like strangers. Mennonites are very cold towards strangers, and when they see a camera, they either try to block you directly or put on negative facial expressions. For instance, being filmed is not pleasant for African societies, and they react strongly to it. However, African people do this only and only to get money from you in return for shooting. That is, when you squeeze a few dollars into their pockets, you can get permission from them for almost everything. But it's not the same for Mennonites, because money and items bought with money have no material value for them and they do not care about money. Therefore, the simple forms of life in African societies are more due to necessity and lack. The situation of Mennonites is entirely related to chosen simplicity and they are not within the scarcity of hunger, scarcity or absence. Since the source of happiness in their philosophy of life is not materialism and they can meet their food and drink needs with agriculture, it is pretty difficult to convince them to talk. They not only dislike being filmed but also do not want to talk and they adopt the coldest approach possible towards people. Of course, they are not enemies but they are never friends either. 
because you represent modernity for them, and even the camera in your hand violates their most basic rule. For example, if you are a guest at a Mennonite family for dinner, you will encounter a scene that you are not familiar with at all. The first thing that stands out about this situation is that there is no electrical wiring inside the houses. Mennonites believe that electricity is the work of demons and do not introduce anything related to electricity into their lives. They do not even have an electric lamp which is necessary for the illumination of the house. Therefore, they illuminate their homes with a gas lamp during dinner and always eat in a dim light atmosphere. In addition, they have as few pieces of furniture as possible in the house. In other words, you cannot see sofas, chairs or paintings on the walls in a Mennonite house. Moreover, a girl and a boy child cannot sit side by side at the dinner table. While girls sit on the long side of the table, boys sit at the ends. Therefore, the tables in the house are made according to the diversity of girls and boys in the family, and this rule is not violated. Before starting the meal, they definitely say a prayer, and everyone completes their prayer within themselves. In addition, it is forbidden for anyone to speak during meals. Even if something important comes to your mind, you cannot take the floor without leaving the dining table. Ultimately, during meals, you should focus only on your plate in front of you and satisfy your hunger. When you look at people's faces at the table, you may think they are very serious, even a bit unhappy. Only the head of the household, the father, appears more dynamic and lively. Therefore, the rules are clear enough. Either you comply with what the Bible says, live in obedience for heaven, or you choose the alluring beauties of the world, get excommunicated, and get expelled from where you are. The crucial point is that all Mennonite sects in the world do not have the same mindset, and some have gradually started to acquaint themselves with the modern world. For example, during a sermon in a church, people read the sermon from smartphones. They even take music lessons in churches and can come to church by car. The biggest taboo that the other Mennonite sect prohibits is engaging in adultery and drinking alcohol. No Mennonite sect tolerates or approves of these two. However, new problems arise this time. If two different Mennonite sects are geographically close, the sects become uncomfortable with each other and try to protect their communities. For instance, families that prohibit everything we have been talking about from the beginning of the video start to think that the more open-minded sect is damaging their traditions. This initiates hostilities between the two sects, and events escalate. Of course, what I mean by events escalating is not things like the religious wars in the Middle East. These people do not resort to violence against life or property. If the number of non-compliant individuals increases, they pack up and look for new areas to settle. Because according to the traditionalists, everything related to modernity kills the spirit of their lives and dulls the spiritual values of life. They are so devoted to their religion and traditions that if their community is influenced by the modern world, they unite and permanently migrate to more primitive regions. If disruptions increase within the community, the traditionalists sell their lands and houses. Afterwards, they embark on journeys to the most primitive, rural areas of Central America and start rebuilding everything. They sell everything from pots and pans in their homes to plastic trash cans through auctions at Mennonite markets. The strange thing is that they even sell their belongings to their own people. They don't sell any items to ordinary people in cities. This cycle continues in this way, and as the era advances, they continue to move towards more primitive areas. Those who manage to sell their lands jump on horse-drawn carriages without even needing their belongings and set out on new adventures like going to Peru. In conclusion, Mennonites live for a single purpose, which is their religion. Their religion and beliefs are more valuable to them than anything else. Therefore, they build everything in their lives according to religious rules. If the conditions in the region they are in deteriorate, they do not hesitate to change countries. Over the years, they do not hesitate to break the established order with a single decision and move to new places. Because this life is a test and the ultimate goal is to go to heaven. To go to heaven, one must unconditionally obey everything written in the Bible and live in obedience. So, what I mentioned at the beginning of the video is exactly this. Societies live by placing different elements at the centers of their lives. 
For some, the most valuable element in life is family. For others, it's an entertaining, stress-free life. And for others, it's a wholly religious and heavenly-focused spiritual life that determines their priorities. So, which one are you? Is it possible for you to live disconnected from the current technological age? Will people evolve into a completely age-appropriate lifestyle after a while or even thousands of years later? Will primitive lives in accordance with traditions still be observed? Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Goodbye.